Hello Zero K fans, this is Shadow Fury 3 with another exhibition match stream. Just another regular exhibition match stream for you tonight. First off, we're gonna have a game between Orphelius and North Chilean G. Now the last name might not be that familiar to you, and I wasn't sure about this, but at the same time I was looking through their history of recent games and it looked like they've been playing quite a lot of games in a series that this game is included in. And it seems like they're actually not doing too terribly in terms of time and in terms of when they were winning. So I figured, well, let's see how they are. Let's see if they're going to be a new up-and-comer maybe in the next tournament or a few tournaments from now as they get better and better. I mean, it's happened before. It'll happen again. So let's begin. We're going to be on Iceland. So a fairly large map, probably familiar to most people who have been watching it for a while but or playing for a while, but not the most familiar map. A lot of games have been played here, but not a huge amount. So let's go over briefly. Everything's basically 1.7 metal. Pretty much everything's plus 1.7. There's some slight variance because this is not using the Lua metal stuff that actually sets the metal spots directly. It's just using the metal texture and then working from there. But yeah, it's approximately 1.7 across the map. Bit lower value than usual. So your main base, you need kind of all four to really get your plus 10. At least solidly, it's like plus 11 at that point. But overall, it is fairly solid. So I might as well just get started. North Chilean J starting at... Sorry, G starting at the... West side of the map, not going for a factory yet, which is a bit of a bad sign. While Orphilius is going straight for the shield bot factory and getting themselves set up pretty quickly. Nothing too out of the ordinary there. Getting bandits first rather than dirt bags. While dirt bags are more popular on this map, I can kind of see the use for bandits because really, ban okay, why? Okay, North Chilean G is going further north. But yeah, I can see these for bandits because by the time dirt bags get to your opponent. They'll probably have defenses and such set up, so the dirtbags wouldn't even be able to get in very far. I think that's what Ophelius is thinking. It might just be that Ophelius doesn't really care to use dirtbags in general. I mean, dirtbags are, are the popular shield bot scout, but they might just not be bothering, as North Chilean G is also going for banded start. A little bit less surprising with newer player because, or lower elo players, because bandits are straightforward. Dirtbags are good for scouting, good for getting information, but they aren't really a straightforward raiding and attacking option, or in this case, a defensive option, as North Chilean G is opting instead to at least keep a couple of the bandits at home. Looks like three of them are moving forward, while the other two remaining at home just in lieu of turrets. Not a terrible idea having mobile units for that purpose, though it is a little bit risky to pull off. It does require having a decent level of micromanagement skill, which, and Ophelius, okay, now Ophelius is going for the dirtbag spam, a little surprising the order there. Orphelius, you also notice, is going pretty heavily for resources. Not really building much at this point. Has the dirt bags for no discernible reason at this point. I mean, they're not being used to scout out yet. Now they're being used to scout out, but even then, that's five dirt bags where one or two would do. Frankly, I, or sorry, seven, eight, okay. I think Orphelius might at this point be actually trying to go easy on North Chilean G. I'm not totally sure, but this many dirt bags is very unusual. On the other hand, the bandits being used up front here is not at all unusual. And I probably should turn off the economy view because that's going to get slightly annoying. But yeah, the bandits here are not so unusual, and the Lotus here is going to get rid of the bandit. There's nothing the bandit can do about it. No way to dodge Lotuses. And at the same time, Dirtbag's coming in here and just cherry tapping these bandits. I mean, I, yeah, I seriously think Orphelius was just doing this because, in a sense, being nice, you know, giving it to North Chilean G and making it slightly easier. Seriously, there's kind of a dearth of very recent replays. That's why I say, if you guys have replays you want to watch, you want people to see, let me know. Let me know and I will cast them. I'm fine with taking suggestions. So North Chilean G is, at this point, not... They're building up... They're building up fairly forward. This is a good thing to do, but I'm just thinking, because Orphelius right now... Like, no slight on North Chilean G, but Orphelius is going easy on them. I mean, you don't build 10 dirt bags to one. You don't build this many. You don't build more than two dirt bags in a game in general. This is very unusual, and Orphelius, in a sense, being nice, but in a more real sense, is sandbagging. Or, I suppose, dirt bagging would be a better term from the Zero K community. But however you put it, Orphelius is going easy on North Chilean G in this game. Which is a little bit disappointing, because I would have liked to have seen North Chilean G being pushed. See what they do, see how they play out. Now get an idea of where they are at and maybe what they can work on, but 
when you're facing against a bunch of dirtbags, that's not really that useful. I mean, okay, yeah, it's kind of annoying. You can just... You can win against them. Either outlaw is not a bad idea. I mean, dirtbags are fairly high health. So, actually, what I was saying before about getting past defenses, dirtbags are less useful for damaging things, though in large numbers they're less, not so much. Getting past defenses, they're a bit more useful. Getting past the Stardust is going to be pretty tricky, though. As in, darn near impossible, so I don't think Orphelius is going to manage to do that. Though, nice use of the jump there, at least getting in close to the Stardust, trying to do what they can, but that's not going to work out. Those dirtbags die as quickly as would be reasonably expected. And how come Lotuses? I would have personally gone for Outlaws, or maybe set up a couple Roaches, probably gone for Outlaws. If I was assuming that my opponent was, and this would be correct in this case, going for dirtbags alone, Actually, I wouldn't really assume that, but I would definitely go for Outlaws in that case. I mean, Shieldbot does not have a particularly good raider on hand. That's kind of a problem. They don't really have much to work from when it comes to raiding. Sorry, not raiding. When it comes to dealing with mass raiders, when it comes to riot units. They have Outlaws, which mostly deal slow damage. They deal some regular damage, but mostly slow. And North Chilean G and Orphelius both expanding quite a lot, both mainly to the north. In fact, Orphelius not taking this safe area at all, surprisingly enough. Admittedly, they did start up further north from center, which is a little unusual on this map. But yeah, that is what they did, and they are making sure that they aren't falling behind. They're actually, they are staying pretty much on par with Orphelius. The only downside is they are not spending re resources on the factory itself. They aren't actually spending anything here, which they really should be. Like, their commander should be assisting the factory or building a caretaker to do so instead. However, it's not being done. But yeah, the Stardust, really good choice. Although, admittedly, the Dirtbags are causing terraforming around it. North Chilean G shouldn't go for second Stardust, should instead level this area out so that the Dirtbags stop. But yeah, the Dirtbags, Dirtbags, of course, when they die, do leave terrain. They deform the terrain, they raise it up. And when that happens, it becomes, well, obviously an obstruction. That, that's exactly how it works. That's how it's supposed to work. And that's how it's worked on this Stardust. So the two choices would either be to level this area out or to raise the Stardust above the ground, like above this entire area. But I'm not sure how much North Chilean G is aware of the terraforming features of the game. I mean, they might be. But yeah, it's like, pull this up and then raise it or something. That'd be the best option. I say it's the best option because while leveling out would work in the short term, more dirtbags are coming in, so raising this up would just make it harder for the dirtbags to jump onto the Stardust, and the Stardust would remain in a pretty good position overall. I mean, over time, there would be the hills built up around it, and it would become difficult for it to attack in an area surrounding it. But that would take a little while for that to happen. And it's better than now, where it's got this entire blind spot right here. Like, this area here is a total blind spot. Can't do anything about that. However, I can't say... I mean, I do kind of agree with the rogue usage. Outlaws are useful for slowing things down, but the rogues... Yeah, I can totally see the use for that. It's just, shield doesn't really have a lot of great options in this particular case. Because disarm isn't going to do any good. Thugs are going to be a little bit slow, and the dirtbags get into melee range anyway, so the shields don't matter too much. Outlaws do slow them down, but don't deal enough damage to really work nicely as the nice riots that you expect them to be, just given their description. They are called riots, but... They don't operate like, say, warriors do. Warriors would be a great option. I mean, if, if North Italian G switched over to Clickabot Factory and built warriors, switching instead to Gunship Factory and not sure what they're going to build with that. Brawlers, perhaps. That wouldn't be a terrible idea. Or going for... Mass Banshee might actually work decently well, but I think Brawlers... Yeah, Brawlers are a solid option. They're a safe option. They're an option that Orphelius would expect. But they're a fairly safe option. Orphelius not yet aware of the gunship factory. At this point, Orphelius only aware of this-ish. Huh. Anyway. Yeah, I've noticed the radar has changed a bit. I actually... I had to modify this slightly because in the next version of the engine, assuming we change over to it, it's... going to... be different. Oh, I see. Yeah, because I did... No, outline radar. What the heck? Okay, well, apparently that is considered outline for some bizarre reason. Whatever. Anyway, yeah, it is now an area radar rather than just showing the outlines. I'm not sure exactly how I think about this, but with the proper settings, it actually looks okay. It looks okay in line of sight view. Looks like I'm going to have to reduce the the intensity of the radar, but whatever. It looks okay. I mean, on the upside, you do get to see exactly what's going on. So you get to see every part of the map where radar applies. Rather than just seeing... Wow, apparently Orphelius has actually built radar inside of North Chilean G's base. While North Chilean G, on the other hand, has no radar whatsoever. 
which is a little disconcerting because that's a pretty core mechanic of the game and you generally want to have radar if you can. And now the brawlers are about to be revealed. Orphelius' commander is up front and Orphelius at... Oh, that's right, because I'm not looking at Orphelius' stuff, not allowing that information to come in. And Orphelius now has pulled way ahead in the economy game, having gotten a bunch of overdrive through this, over to the north, east side of the map, and the southwest as well, and rather surprised to use the gunships and losing their commander, though admittedly not at a great... Okay, the problem here is Orphelius was basically just playing a joke game. They've been building nothing but dirtbags up to this point, and brawlers will counter that outright. The only downside is the lack of accuracy, but hey, the brawlers can just go around the map killing all the metal extractors, and that will do the trick. The rogues are doing an okay job against the dirtbags, and the stardusts prevent the dirtbags from getting close. Though seriously, army on the ground, I would go with... I would go with Klogibot switch into warriors. At least against as many dirtbags, the warriors would do the trick. But the Brawlers are also a good option just on account of being able to get around, but then of course Hawks come in and deal with the Brawlers, and that's not going to work out too well. Alternatively, one could get Tridents, but yeah, this is a lot of Hawks. Or Felix has a lot of build power here. The best option of the Brawlers right now is basically going to be a suicide into the Caretakers, which is what's happening. But yeah, there's not much the Brawlers can really do other than try to slow this down, and unfortunately I don't think any of the Caretakers are going to go down. One does go down, a bit lucky on that one, but the remaining Caretakers will not go down, and that basically means nothing. North Chilean G has done absolutely nothing here, while Orphelius is continuing to swarm with dirtbags. And even for basically dirtbagging it, because sandbagging no longer applies very well when you're dealing with this, it's worked out okay, but yeah, Trident, well, there's North Chilean G's answer to that. I would almost recommend just switching to your airplane plant, getting a bunch of Swifts and using that to kill off of these Hawks, because there are way too many Hawks here to just deal with with Tridents. Uh, you'd need probably about a dozen tridents to deal with those hawks. And they're going to be coming in fairly soon too. These hawks here are going to be just coming straight in to deal with the brawlers right about now. Yep, there they go. Coming across the map and we'll be able to take care of those brawlers post haste. So those brawlers will do nothing. No one get rid of any of the dirtbags. And the dirtbags of course are being built at a regular basis. They're just... Every couple seconds is a new dirtbag. It's just trying to deal with that is difficult, so I'm not sure why exactly this is being done, if it's being done as a way of going easy on North Chilean G, because frankly, it's cherry tabbing. Like, it's both sandbagging and cherry tabbing at the same time, which is actually not surprising at all, because they're pretty much the same thing, in a sense. But yeah, bit of a joke unit being used en masse still does a lot of damage. And North Chilean G about to lose their commander to the swarm of dirtbags mobbing it, and it doesn't matter, North Chilean G throws in the towel. That was embarrassing. Really, Orphelius, why did you go for so many dirtbags? That was... That really didn't give me the best game to look at. Actually, in general, that didn't give North Chilean G the best game to learn from. So I don't know what the motivation was behind that. My guess was to kind of go easy on North Chilean G, but frankly, that was... That was a bizarre strategy that you never see in high-level play, or very rarely. Like, high-level play, they probably go for Warrior Switch to deal with it directly, or just get a bunch of bandits and simply go around the dirtbags. Just ignore the dirtbags, go straight for the base, because there's nothing defending the main base, so you might as well. I mean, it's all open. North Chilean G's expansion attempts were a good idea. That was good. Stay on top of the economy, make sure you don't fall behind, don't get caught up in defending your base. Apparently, I mean, North Chilean G have been playing a lot in a row, I'm guessing that they learned this from earlier games, either in that set, or just from previous experience. That was good. But yeah, the use of dirtbags here is really difficult to try to deal with because that's a very odd strategy. You don't see that very often. I mean, I'm a little bit surprised that it was used, if it was used as a go easy on the newbie or go easy on the low elo player strategy because I don't know how many high level players would have an easy time dealing with that. That'd be the sort of strategy I would see as like game two in a tournament, either or game one or game two when you're up one just to totally mix up your opponent and throw them off and make them completely confused for the rest of the game and not know what to do. It's a Q-based strategy, that's what it is. Granted, we haven't seen Q-based in a while, but yeah, it's a Q-based strategy. And you don't do Q-based strategies against new players. Because that just gives them completely wrong thing to go against. You, you do the... You do the standard strategies against new players. If you want to go easy, maybe you just don't do them as strongly, but you do the standard strategies that when they learn, they learn against what's basically standard meta. They don't learn against these crazy strategies that go completely outside of the norm. Granted, knowing how to deal with them is a very important skill, but it's not a fundamental skill. Or rather, it's a skill that requires knowledge of the fundamentals of the game before trying to deal with this, because if you know the fundamentals of the game, 
dealing with this isn't as difficult. You know what units you have available. You know what dirtbags you can do and can't do. You know that they're slow. You know that they're completely melee only. You know that they basically, while they're cheap, they're not going to be able to be used that effectively to deal with the rest of the map, and raiders can just go hog wild. Especially if your opponent is going pure dirtbag. I mean, the rogues weren't a bad idea, and they definitely worked as defense. But yeah, it was being able to push forward. The expansion was good, but beyond that, not much. The brawlers weren't a terrible idea, but at the same time, switching over to air wasn't hard either. Anyway, gonna have another game, which is gonna be more even. It's gonna be Aquaman versus Kane. It's gonna be on Kaleo, and it's gonna be up in just a couple minutes, so stay tuned for that.